Hi everybody, I'm Reva with Quality Sewing and Vacuum and today we're going to be talking about how do I read a pattern. So you may have had a pattern and you're like, oh my goodness, what does all that stuff mean? So we're going to go over that and we're going to also hopefully do some other things too. So I grabbed a plethora of patterns to kind of show you. Um, on a pattern envelope, the back side, you should expect to find the notions that you need for your project and the fabric requirements that you need for your project. But depending on the project and the pattern company, you're gonna find different information. So let's take a look at these. It's Annie's Craft Crates. So this will say what fabric you need, and this one is broken down to the small, the medium, and the large size little box here. So you would get the amount of yardage that it's there, and then it will tell you if you need contrast for the handles or, or whatever, okay? That's pretty simple. Most craft style projects are similar. So this one is a really cute little project bag. It's called Classmate. And this is from Atkinson Designs. And it goes over and it tells you, of you know, print one or uh, the main print, the lining print, the binding. It tells you all the pieces that you need. Now that's pretty easy to, you know, kind of decipher, right? But if you're getting into a garment, there's lots of different things. So I, I'll just put these aside. I just tried to grab a bunch of different patterns um, from different manufacturers. So let's take a look. I even grabbed some curtains. I didn't realize I grabbed curtains. Um, let's grab this one right here. So this is a very typical pattern. This is a McCall's pattern. And on the back, you have all this writing here. So you have, it says body measurements, and then it's in like French. I mean, that makes it more confusing, right? And then it has all these like scales, and, and it's like, well, what do I do? And what are all these over here? So let's start with this part. So on this pattern, there are three different versions of this dress, the Brooklyn dress. There is the view A, which is a long sleeve with a mock turtleneck, B, a short sleeve with the, the quarter zip, and then C is a long sleeve with a quarter zip. Okay, so there's three different options. On the, on the front side, you also will find the pattern number and then the size that are included. Now, way back when, way back when, when we first learned to sew, you had to buy one size pattern. And patterns are never sized correctly for a real human being. I don't even know who they figure these things fit because they, they don't. Um, but you're not, uh, so they were, we had to buy a size 10 or a size 12 or whatever it was. This is awesome. Can you see on here? It says this is an A5 and it has a 6, 8, 10, 12, and a 14 in that pattern. Now, the first thing that you want to do is not buy your size. So if you normally wear a 12, don't go thinking that a size 12 is going to fit you because it probably won't. You might be like a 14 or a 16 in a pattern when you wear a 10 or a 12. It's just rude, but that's the way it kind of goes. But what you do want to do is look at your size in measurements. There's usually three main measurements that they take uh, that they will base a pattern on, bust, waist, and hip. So measure your bust, your waist, and your hip. Now I'm going to go around, hold on, I'm going to go around, I have a bag of tricks back here. I brought a whole bunch of stuff. So to measure, there's, if you're doing two different things, you might be measuring a friend, right? Can you see me okay from here? Okay. If you're going to be measuring someone else, just get a tape measure, okay? Uh, you want to get, uh, make sure you have a fiberglass one, because if you have a really super old one that's cool, but you can tell it has fabric underneath it, um, don't use that because it stretches, so it's really not the right size. So just get yourself a new fiberglass one, and you can measure someone with it. The tip is zero, and you would just put it right around them uh, to the, the spot you need to go to and just wherever this hits up, it's the size, right? That's the measurement. If you're measuring yourself, you might try the sew-to-grow measuring tape. 
This is really cool. And what you do is you put it around yourself. Let's see if I can put it around myself. You put it around yourself, and then you slide it into the little doohickey thing right there, and then you can see what the measurement is. Okay, so that way, if you have to measure yourself, it's like having a third hand. So it's pretty handy. So I highly recommend having one of these. So then I'm going to come back around. So then what you're going to do is you're going to find your measurements. Now I have some, some measurements that have been donated. This actually came about by a friend who said, I'm so confused. I have no idea what this means. So I got her measurements and we're going to go from that. So the bust is... 46, the waist is 40, and the hips are 48. So what we're going to do is we want to look up here. So I need to go to a 46 and a half bus size. Seriously, that's a size 24. We all know that is not true, right? But according to this pattern, it is. Then the waist is a 40, so that's a size, oh my goodness, it's a 20 six it's off the charts and a hip at 48 is a 24 okay so if you can see your measurements we all know that that is like a normal size that's not um and this is a teenager so she's not any of those sizes right so just bear in mind don't be flabbergasted when you see the size they say you are okay but you have to go with it if they were being polite, they should have gone the opposite way and made us wear a 10 when we wear a 14. I'm just saying that would be nice, but people just don't think that way. Okay, so let's say we're going to go with the size. Um, basically, most what you want to do is look at the measurements that you have and where do they fall most into. So let's go hypothetical. Let's say I have a 38 inch bust, a 28 inch waist, and a 40 inch hip. That puts me in a 16 twice and a 14 once. So let's go with the measurements for the 16. Okay, so we're gonna go with 16. So we're gonna look down here. And other measurements that it has on here too is the uh, back waist length. And that is, what that is, is from here, from this knobby knobby you have on your back to your waist. Okay, so that's that length. Um, one thing to know is a lot of times kids don't wear their pants on their natural waist. So maybe tie a yarn around and where it sets, that's the natural waist. A lot of kids, like my daughter, wears them down on her hips. And she doesn't like having anything on her waist. So, but the measurements are based off of a real waist. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Okay, so we're gonna go with that size 16. So I'm gonna go down here to, let's say we wanna make dress A, and I'm gonna come over here to a 16 and see that I need two and three eighths yards of that fabric, okay? And that is off of, we gotta look at the suggested fabrics. Two way stretch knits, and um, rib knit, interlock, cotton knit, novelty knit. So this dress is made for knit fabrics, which means if you try to do this out of something that's not a knit, it's not going to work because knits have what's called, boy, we're getting into kind of deep here, negative ease. Okay. So a knit fabric, if you were to hold it up, it's going to be smaller than your body because it's meant to stretch around your body. Whereas if I made it out of quilting cotton, it has to have a positive ease. So maybe the dress or top is two inches bigger than I am because you gotta be able to move, right? That's why we love knits is because we don't have to stress about it as much. Okay, so that is, that's what we wanna look for is that type of fabric. And if you take a look over here on the side here, it says dress A is 60 inch wide fabric at two and three eighths inch knit fabric at 60 inches wide. Most cotton fabric, like the fabric you see behind me is all 42 inches or 45 inches wide. Knit fabric is usually 60. So if you find a piece that's narrower than 60 inches in width, you're gonna have to buy more, okay? And um, a lot of times they will give that 
on the, they, they will have that on there as well. Okay, all right. So, um, okay, let's take a look at this. It also says what type of interfacings that you need. And it says for views A, B, and C, you need these interfacings. And um, then a lot of times it will give you your notions. So let's see where it says that. It should say it on the outside. Since this one has a zipper, it should give me a zipper. But I don't see that listed here. So it might be inside. Okay. So now let's take a look at the inside of our pattern envelope. Here is the beginning of the pattern. It will show you the views, the front and the back views. This is kind of nice. It shows you some basic sewing supplies that you might want to have on hand. And then it tells you, it starts talking about the sizing of the pieces. It will show you a layout of how you should lay out the fabric to cut it out. Okay, when you're looking at a pattern and you see a white piece, see how that's all white? Let's look at the bottom one, it's probably easier to see. See how that's white? That means the right side, if it's dotted like that, that means the wrong side. And they should give you a nice little diagram of that. Okay, so now let's take about how to, how to lay this out and take a look at this. And I'm not gonna destroy this um, pattern because it may need to be, I, it's not my pattern, I don't wanna destroy it, right? So let's grab this one. I grabbed this one because I could. Apparently I've made this, I don't even remember who I made it for. Might have been my daughter, so that tells you, she's 28, it tells you how old this pattern is. Okay, so same type of thing. It has the all the pieces that are part of the pattern, then it also gives you an illustration of how to lay that out. So let's talk about the patterns first though. Now, if you have a pattern like this, and they all are gonna be creased because they've been folded up, you can press them with a dry iron, no steam. Because did you know that steam will shrink paper? Mm. And if you wanna have a pattern that fits, you don't wanna be shrinking it, right? Okay, so let's take a look at this piece and hope that this will uh, work for what we need. Okay, this will be good. This is a sleeve. Or no, it's a little pant, the little pants. Okay, so can you see that okay? I would press that with a dry iron. Now here on here, there's a couple of different things for this particular one. You can see that there's a full, a long pant and then there's a short. And that's where this line, what this line means is that if you're making the shorts, you're gonna cut there. And if you're gonna go to the pant, it goes down there. But what I wanna go over is, grab a pen out of here. I brought all sorts of goodies for you today. Reva Pat wanted to, to let you know she loves your dress. Oh, I thank you, Pat. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So uh, here, here's the, this one is a size four, five, and six. So if you're working with a pattern, like remember how we were looking at that original one where the waist was a 16 or the, the bust was a 16, the waist was a, a 14, and then the hip was a 16. Remember we went back and forth. So that's something that you can easily do. Let's see if I, well, it is what it is. Okay, so if this is my, um, let's say my waist is small, but my hips are big and I need that size six in the hips, but the waist is a four, what you're going to do is connect those two. So I have my French curve here because what we're gonna need to do is find a, a, a slope or find a curve that will smoothly go from our big size down to our small size. Okay, so and at home, I would just be using like a Sharpie or something because I'm just going to cut that. Okay, so let's take a look. Can you see how I drew a line from there and smoothed it out to the hip line? Okay, so if you're doing a top, if you have a, a broader bust than a waist, you start on the outer or whichever line you need because like that, this pattern that we were looking at has... How many sizes does it have? One, two, three, four, five sizes in it. So you'll see that some lines are dashed, some lines, they're dashed, different lengths of dots and things like that. So that's, each one is a different size. So to find out what that is, 
and don't worry, I won't write on this pattern, but to find this out, find a spot on the pattern where it's clear to see the different types of dots and lines. That is your size. So if you needed to go, I still won't write on the pattern. Um, so let's say we were the 14 and we needed to go down to a 10 at the waist. We would just take our French curve and blend them in together. So maybe it'd be like that to there and then we need to reverse it and bring the curve down. Does that kind of make sense? So you take it from one spot and come down in and then reverse the curve. Okay, I don't know if that, does that make sense at all? You'll have to tell me yes or no. What do you think, Carrie? Is, is that I okay? I think it makes sense. Okay. If anyone disagrees, they can type in the yes, comments. Yes, please type in the <laughs> comments. Okay, another thing that I like to have on hand is a small rotary cutting ruler because when I'm cutting out the pattern, I might want to use my rotary cutter that's designed. I have one that I've labeled paper. The one that I brought with me today, the one that I forgot to bring with me today um, is not labeled for paper, but I do have one that's labeled for paper so I can just cut um, with that. Okay, so now let's look at some other things that are on this pattern. You're gonna see that there are double notches here. See this two little triangles that make an M? That's, this is called a notch. And then here's a single notch over here. Double usually refers to the back and a single is in the front. So when you're cutting out your fabric, you can take your scissors, so you'll have this pre-cut out your pattern with your scissors, and then, oh, I know where I can show you. Here's a piece, apparently I just hacked this thing to, to, to death here. But, you know. And we had three responses that yes, what you explained, they got it and it works. So okay, okay. Must be good. Whew. Thank goodness, okay, I'm gonna, you're going to carefully cut out your pattern. Now, um, I hate cutting out patterns. I'll, I'll give you a history. I hate cutting out patterns. So when I was little, my mom would cut out my fabric for me because I hate that part. I love the sewing, but not so much the cutting. Um, and then in college, um, my professors would say, you know, the more precisely you cut out your pattern, the more precisely your garment will fit. And it's very true because if you have a sixteenth of an inch error, in the way you cut out your pattern, and then you have a sixteenth of an inch error in your seaming, that's a quarter of an inch. I mean, that's an eighth of an inch, right? And if it's two sides, and if you have a front and a back on both sides, that could be as much as a quarter inch on both sides. That's a half inch difference in the way it fits. So you could really mess stuff up. <laughs> okay, don't be afraid, it's okay. Okay, so this is, this is a notch, right? So when you have this on your fabric and you've cut out your fabric and you've got all your pieces cut out, all your fabric and everything, we'll talk about laying out fabric, you go back and you snip into that and then you have a little, you just have a little vent, you just snip it. You can cut out the whole triangle if you want to. Older patterns you're gonna see that they go out too. So it would have like a point outside and some people would cut around the notches on the outside but you can also just cut into them on the inside. Now these are important because it's gonna help you make sure that you get the right part of one piece to match up with the correct spot on another piece, okay? So they're kind of like the puzzle pieces that help your pattern fit, especially when you're working with curves. So um, uh, do you want more, who wants more information than you need? Tell me, let me know if you want more information than you need and then I'll come back to that. Um, then you also have important things on the pattern, like this line right here. This is your grain line. That's extremely important because you need to have it follow the grain of the fabric. Okay, we'll talk about that in a second. Then you'll also notice right here, there's little dots. There's a four, or five, and a six. You need to mark the dots too. Okay, so I'll show you how to do that. All right. Any responses on the want more information than you need? No one? Okay, so that means nobody wants to know. So I'm fine with passing that over. And I, to tell you the truth, I might even forget by the time we got there. Okay, so let's go back over here 
and I'm going to show you how to lay out your fabric. And let me go ahead and try to neaten up is that that one. Oh, and this is that one. Look at see, like I'm already starting to get confuddled. Oh, and by the way, once you take it out of the pattern envelope, you never get it back in the same way. So don't worry about that. It just really doesn't happen. Okay, so that goes with this one. And this is We'll figure it out later. I'm just trying to get some space. Okay, so let's talk about laying out your fabric. Okay, so there's a couple of things that you need to pay attention to when you're laying out your fabric. Number one is the grain line. Now, the um, pattern pieces have instructions on how to lay out your project. This one has multiple uh, ways because it talks about using different widths of fabric. Uh, the one that we looked at first, the dress, that was only using the 60 inch wide, so it's not as, there's not going to be as many options. But refer to this because this really does give you the best fabric con um, conservation so you can get more out of less, right? If you, go, if you go completely off the reservation, you might need three yards extra. Who knows, right? Okay, so now let's talk about grain line. Grain line... is means lengthwise grain okay isn't it handy that all this fabric was here to be able to show you this okay lengthwise grain is the grain as it comes off the bolt okay this is lengthwise grain here this is crosswise grain so when you're looking at a pattern and it shows you the grain line it's talking about the lengthwise grain, not the crosswise, okay? So here, let's just take a look at this fabric, for example. Now, what we're gonna need to do is have Reva remember where she put the pin, I put the pins over on the, the machine there. Okay, so what you're going to want to do is make sure that that grain line is straight with the grain of the fabric, thank you. Okay, so, um, and that doesn't mean, okay, can you see, I, I can reach, it's okay, she's so sweet. Okay, so can you see the line of the pant here? If I were to line this up with the, you know, the selvage as a straight edge, because that's straight, right, so that makes sense, but then my grain is going at an angle. So what that means is that they're going to, the little pants are going to hang funny, they're not going to hang correctly. Now lengthwise grain doesn't really have any stretch to it, crosswise does have some stretch and bias has a lot of stretch okay but we're talking about lengthwise grain here now i'm i didn't pay any attention to how it says to lay it out we're just doing it okay so and i'm not really going to cut it so what you want to do is eyeball it where you kind of think it needs to go okay and i'm working from the selvage your selvage is straight your fold isn't necessarily straight but I'm going to eyeball that, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come from, and I can get that closer to the selvage because I want to be con conservative of my fabric. I'm going to come here, and let me take a pin. Okay, I do like the flathead flower pins, but you will notice on, the, um, on our website for this, uh, our live here, I put on the glass head pins from Quilter Select, they're really fine. These are so thick and heavy, they actually can damage your fabric if you're, if, you, if you're doing fine fabric. So just be careful of that. Okay, so can you see, I took a little bite. I went in and out, but not very much. It's like a quarter of an inch. Okay, so I'm gonna take my tape measure now, put it at that, and I'm gonna come up to my selvage, and I have eight and three eighths. To the selvage. So now I want to come to the opposite end of my grain line and I want to go eight and three eighths. So I need to shift it a little bit that way. And then I can pin right here. Now we have the grain line straight, which is the most important thing. Then you can add a pin here, a pin here, a pin here, a pin here. Okay. Just to make sure that you have pins at all the pivotal spots. And then you can cut it out with your scissors. 
Now, I like a rotary cutter much more than I like scissors. However, I do love the sound of scissors on like a wood table. When you cut, it goes honk, honk. I love that sound. Okay, but I have something to share with you. This is something that my dad made for me in college. Um, he made the little box and it's full of my pattern weights. Now on our website, we do have some modern potter, pattern weights. These are really, these are old. But hey, my daddy made my box, so I'm always gonna have them. But anyway, so you, then you can take pattern weights, and the neat thing about the ones that we have on our website is that they have some that are curved to go around, like a shape like this, or, or um, and then there's straight ones too. And you would just simply place them, and you see how that one's standing up kind of tall? That's because these particular pattern weights have a place to put thumbtacks in so they grip. But I usually don't use it. I just slap them down and I use my rotary cutter. But before you do that, you would have trimmed out, you would have, let me first say, altered the pattern and drawn all the lines that you need for the proper fit for that pattern. And then you would have cut out the paper pattern um, to the correct size. Now, I've tried to uh, reserve and make sure I didn't permanently mess up a pattern. So I would fold patterns back and stuff like that. But let's be honest, how many times are you really gonna use a pattern more than once? Probably not. And if you are, it's probably for the same person, right? So just cut it and it's fine. You know, but you can get them for really cheap when they're on sale, so just, just enjoy, right? And if you need to save it, then you can use uh, pattern tracing paper to um, transfer and have the pattern the right size, and then you use that for cutting and stuff, okay? So does the pattern weights make sense? Why do you use those? Because you want to make sure that everything lays flat. So if I was using pins instead of the um, pattern weights, I would pin every so often to make sure that nothing shifts. And please be cautious when you pin because you wanna make sure that the pattern is laying flat and that you go in and you take a bite, but you haven't disrupt, disrupted the fabric. So, for example, if you just go like this, you could have it and, you know, have buckled the pattern. You could have buckled the fabric and then you won't have that right fit. Does that make sense? Okay. So, I'm going to carefully take this off. Um, oh, and the glass head pins are kind of nice too because you can um, iron them and they won't melt. Like the flower head pins would melt if you put an iron on them. That would be a bad day, okay? Um, oh, I told you I would show you how to deal with these markings. So we talked about notches. So when you get it cut out, then you go back and go snip, snip, snip into the notches. But when you have dots like this, there's a couple of things that you can do. So let me get out this guy, let me get out this guy, and I'll get out this guy okay you want to use a fabric marking pen so um i have a clover water soluble marking pen i have a, a friction pen and then i have a chalk marker so it just depends on what kind of fabric you're working on and what you're doing but you have it all pinned down there's pins everywhere and then you want to do these marks so what i do is let's say i need to do that six i'm going to come into the middle of that six and i'm going to go straight down and then bend it Take out the pins here. Then we can lean the fabric back and you can take your fabric marker and just mark right where that pin goes into the fabric, okay? Or you can use your friction pen or the chalk pen. And we put this on the website as well. And there's a lot of different colors of chalk that you can put in here. So no matter what color fabric that you're working with, it will go, uh, you can see it. And it's really great because then it brushes off. Hey, Carrie, are there any questions? Uh, no, but Frances did come up with a very good point. She said that when she was younger, she had, didn't have a table large enough to put her pattern on, so she did it on the floor, and she found that she had very snugly pinned it to the carpet. Oh, So yeah. um, to make sure that if you're pinning on your flat surface, which is a floor, you don't want to pin it to your flooring. Yeah, well, that's, that's a very good point. Um, I don't know, I, I think a lot of us have actually had to work on a floor. Um, consider getting your uh, whatever fabric cutting mat that you're using, even if you're not using a rotary cutter, slip it underneath the part of the pattern you're working on before you cut or pin. And then that might help keep your uh, carpet from becoming part of your garment. <laughs> that's awesome. Poor 
Francis, I'm, yeah, that, that is so true. Okay, so um, is there anything else that I'm missing? I'm, well, I, other things that I, I put on the website there is, this is called a hot hemmer. Um, so when you're going along and you need to hem the, you know, the edge of the pants, you can fold up the fabric and you can iron right on to this fabric and or onto this piece so you can see the right measurement and then it also has a curve for a pocket. So it's a really handy thing to have. Um, and I think I showed you just about everything else. So, um, yeah, uh, it's not hard to lay out a, to, to cut out your pattern. Uh, it's not hard to read it once you figure out what it is. Before we go though, I did bring this cause I want to share this with you. This is a, a project I just recently, um, completed except for the quilting part. I pieced it. I haven't quilted it yet, but I wanted to show you maybe let's hope it's in here. What there it is. So here's the fabric listing of what fabric goes where. So if you have a quilt or a craft project that's using multiple fabrics or even a dress, if it has multiple fabrics, in order to not forget which one goes where, considering just cutting a little swatch of fabric and um, sticking it on your pattern next to that piece so that way you can remember. So this is your fabric, correct? It That's the fabric. It didn't come like this. It did not. No, I glued those little fabrics right onto there. Okay. So I just cut little little nips off of the edge, and then I, I uh, used a fabric glue stick and glued them right on. And then that helps keep you straight. So even if you're doing, maybe you're going to do um, this little pair of pajamas, but you want to have a different color ruffle or whatever, you know, you can put that on, on the fabric so you just don't forget which goes where. Especially if you can't sew it all at one time, you have to come back to it because that's a great opportunity to forget what you had in mind. Okay, so that's just, um, just a suggestion that you do for um, some things. Um, but you can also go ahead and um, it might not be a bad idea. On the end of the bolt, let me move this off so you can see. On the end of a bolt, especially the fabric bolt at the, you know, for garment fabrics, it tells you what your fabric is made of. And it usually will give you washing instructions a lot of times, especially if it is a, um, like, rayon or something like that. This is quilting cotton, so it just says 100% cotton. And it does say the width. I guess we should do that, too. Heaven says we're talking about reading a, a pattern, but we're not talking about how to pick out the fabric. Okay, can you see right here where it says 100% cotton, right? Is that right there where it says? And it says it's, I can't see that far, 44 to 45 inches in width. So that's how you know what width your fabric is. So you know which cutting or yardage requirements that you need is based on that information. But um, do jot down or take a picture of the end of the bolt with your cell phone. So when you get home, you can put a little um, tag on your fabric. So that way you know that you have the right instructions for your fabric uh, as far as laundering and um, what it's made out of, okay? All right, any questions? All right, well, hopefully this has been helpful and I hope that you get to sewing because you know what, yeah, fall will be here for, before long and we love having that new back to school wardrobe. And even if you're not going back to school, you deserve a new back to school, school wardrobe. So just uh, go from your flat measurement, your real measurements, and then just pay no attention to the size it says on the pattern. Remember, they may say you're one size, but you're really not, but it's okay. So, all right, so hopefully that helps and we'll see you next time.